Hey YouTube's Big Mike without further ado retro. Uh welcome to part two of my Spectrum tape collection. Uh this part is clamshell boxes and cardboard boxes. Cheers. Right, first up uh is Gremlins on it's a, obviously clamshell. Um Gremlins, don't know too much about this. Obviously Gremlins was a great film. Um I picked it up on the Spectrum somewhere along the way, probably as part of a bundle. Um, don't know too much about it though, so that one's Gremlins. Next one I do know a little bit about, which is Saboteur. Absolutely fantastic game, really, really good. Uh, Love this game. Uh, look at that picture as well. He's kicking someone in the face and he's also shooting someone with a gun. You can't get any more ninja than that, can you, really? Saboteur is a great game. Remember playing this a lot um, growing up. You're a ninja. Your dog's trying to get you. Bloke's trying to kill you. You have to get in, plant bombs, and escape. You, know, you turn up a boat or escape in a helicopter. Really cool game. The first ever sort of ninja I'm up I remember. So uh, or ninja simulator, <laughs> arcade ninja simulator. So uh, yeah, really good game. So really, really, really cool. Um, fantastic game. And who remembers this one? Biggles, uh, based on the comic Biggles. I'm a bit too young for the comic Biggles, but I certainly do remember this game. Uh, looks like it's got a first person sort of uh, flying mode there. And I remember the side flying where you had to bomb the uh, things. Absolutely brilliant bit of Biggles. It's a fantastic game and uh, well worth a play if, you have, if you've never played it before. So that is Biggles. Next one, here he is, he's back. It's Monty Mole, and he's on the run. <laughs> 7 95 from Gremlin Graphics, before they just became Gremlin. Uh, like I say, very um, like um, Jet Set Willy-esque, this. If you look at the game, you sort of got to complete the screens. Uh, really cool. There's all your bumps there. So, uh, I like I say, uh, Monty on the run. Fantastic game. I like all the Monty Mole games. I, I think I think I've got them all. Uh, if by the end of this collection I, anyone knows of ones I've got missing, uh, please let me know. I think the Horace game I'm missing is Horace and the Spiders. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, here's another uh, old arcade classic, um, which is Spy Hunter by Sega. Um, an older sort of this would have been the first sort of. Uh, Arcades I would have played back in the day. Don't remember playing this one too much, but I do remember playing it a lot on the uh, the home system the Spectrum version. Very good conversion. Uh, very good conversion. So that is Spy Hunter on the Spectrum. Uh, sticking with Sega and Arcade Classics, which is Tapper. Um, obviously an arcade by Sega. Never seen it in the arcades. Um, I've seen it on like films and things, but um, probably a little bit before my time. But uh, a good conversion on the spectrum, I think. So not too bad. So that's Tapper on the spectrum. Next one is a sort of a bit of a wizard, wizard game, heavy on the magic. This was actually um, in part as a part of a um, a shed find. One of my friends was doing a a clearance in a shed and got a plus three. Load of games. Unfortunately, the plus three, um, uh, a lot of the games and things were beyond repair, a bit mouldy and things. But uh, nevertheless, managed to salvage this. Uh, I've yet to try if it works yet, but uh, there was some real sort of. It was, it was a bit of bit upsetting really because there was some real gems in there, and a lot of them the weather and mould and time had got onto them, and it's uh, sad to see because we really sort of need to preserve these gems and keep them going. As best as we can. So, I thought this was a sequel to that, but it's not. This is just called The Price of Magic, Level Nine Computing. Um, yeah, I think this is a text adventure. I'm not sure. Don't know too much about this one. So that's The Price of Magic. Uh, and the last clamshell that I have is Formula One. It's cool artwork, though, isn't it? It's it's really cool, isn't it? 
like I say, you don't get you don't get stuff like this. Like I say, I don't know if the game lives up to it. It doesn't look great, does it? But uh, the artwork on the front is pretty cool, though. So uh, that's that one, right? So that's Formula One. Right now we're on to uh, the cardboard boxes. So we'll start off with the little bit boring ones first. Back to the Future Two. Uh, don't know too much about this game. Oh, <laughs> not the tripod. Don't know too much about this game. Um, it's I remember playing. I remember that scene on the Amiga, um, but I can't remember it being that good a game. I've always I remember it, but uh, yeah, it's Back to the Future Two. Nonetheless, I've got it. So uh, yeah, I'll probably give it a check. A look at check it out at some point. So. Uh, it's the old uh, Hulkamania, old Hulk, Hulk Hogan, and a British Bulldog, and I don't know who that other guy is, probably Sergeant or something, or, you know, but I remember back in the day, I used to, uh, I remember I used to spend my lunch breaks, and there was a picture in, like, your Sinclair or something, with uh, Hulk, Hulk Hogan taking on the Ultimate Warrior in this game, and it was, like, pixel by pixel, and I copied it out over several lunch breaks, um, yeah, I was a pretty exciting kid during school. <laughs> so I spent my lunch breaks uh, drawing pixel pi pixel by pixel of Hulk Hogan fighting with the Ultimate Warrior. But that is WrestleMania. I've never actually played it, actually, on the Spectrum. But uh, I was in awe of it in the magazines. I thought, oh, that looks great. But uh, <laughs> never played it to this day, but I've got it. So uh, another one we'll have to have a look at. Don't know what this is like on this system, but I used to love it on the Master System, which is Super Wonder Boy, and he's on his way to Monsterland. So Super Wonder Boy in Monsterland, uh, great game on the Master System. Uh, I don't know what it's like on the Spectrum, but nevertheless, I picked it up at some point, so uh, I certainly should be go uh, giving it a look look through. So it's cool artwork again, Super Wonder Boy in Monsterland. That's really cool. Now we're starting to get into them. <laughs> no great game here ninja spirit f cool artwork look at the size of that boss um we used to call him uh <laughs> ultimate harry's <laughs> i think basically we used to call him the ultimate and my friend's nickname was harry and so when i got onto the ultimate and it's like oh it's the ultimate harry and therefore they became ultimate harry's then so every time you got to a boss it was an ultimate harry <laughs> so so yep uh so this is Ninja Spirit, great game on the Spectrum, really cool. Uh, I've got this on the Amiga as well, uh, but I remember playing it on the Spectrum, really cool. Uh, great game. I think I might have played it in the arcade as well, I've got a feeling it's an arcade. So, now this next game is fantastic, I love this game. Really good game, which is Myth. This is a great game, it's uh, originally made for the 8-bits, uh, which is on the... The Spectrum, the C64, probably the Amstrad as well. I don't know about the Amstrad, but uh, look at the graphics on that, if you can see it. Uh, absolutely brilliant. And then uh, several years later, they remade this um, with graphics update and slightly tweaked and a bit, little bit different for the uh, for the Amiga. So it's uh, usually games are the other way around, made for the Amiga and then ported down. But this game was so good, as you can see by the ratings, Crash Master Sizzler... CMVG hit. Um, this game was so good that they, uh, I suppose, the demand was there to create it for the Amiga. So I've got it on the Amiga as well. And the Amiga version is very good as well. But this is where it originated from. Absolutely superb. That's myth. Great artwork again. All right. The next one is Batman. Uh, Batman the movie. This is uh was a great game on the um on the Spectrum. It's a great game on most systems that I've played it on. Uh the Spectrum was you can see the black and blue graphics there. That's the actual Spectrum. Um great game, one of the best games on the Spectrum. Fantastic, really good on the Amiga. Um just a really good all round game, good music, great game. I've got two of those, so that's the two that I have. Um uh, so, but yeah, so I've got two of those, so I'll keep one of those. But like I say, I don't want to sell any of the games until I've tested them all and I know that they're working. So, um, 
you know, with the collecting, it's more about the, the boxes and that for me. But I still like to know that if I'm selling something, it's, it's working, like, you know. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel right. Um, right, the next one is a game I remember the arcades, which is Shadow Warriors. Uh, in the arcade, this was mad. I remember when you used to lose, uh, you died on the arcade game. Uh, you had the bit where you had to select whether you are going to play again. And there was a circular chainsaw going, uh, or a circular saw, should I say, going... Uh, revolving around the guy's head is getting closer and closer to the guy's head and uh, if you don't continue all the sort of screen goes red and blood splatters and that was quite graphic when you were a kid in the arcade it was like oh blooming hell <laughs> so there's the actual uh, shots of the arcade there it's actually quite a good conversion on Spectrum really uh, it's a pretty cool game but yeah I remember in the arcades I did have it back in the day I might have had this on disc I think actually but uh yeah, it's quite a good little conversion. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Shadow Warriors. Really nice art box on that as well. Right, the next one. Bob Wakelin artwork. Uh, they might have, some of the other ones might have been, but I know this one is. Uh, like I say, we lost uh, Bob Wakelin the other week, uh, and he was responsible for the majority, if not all, of the... Uh, Ocean and Imagine games and a lot of the box art I'll show you over the next few days uh, he's going to be uh, responsible for. This is one of his uh, pieces. Uh, like I say, back in the day we used to buy the games off the artwork and I'm sure, well I know myself, I've bought many games just based on his artwork. So uh, their Ocean cells and Imagine cells wouldn't have been what they were without uh, Bob Waitlin, definitely. But it's one of his, one of his uh, fantastic pictures there. Chase HQ is a fantastic game. Not sure if that's the Amiga, if that's the arcade screenshots, but what a conversion this was. I'd even say that this uh, plays probably better on the Spectrum than it does on the Amiga. It's a fantastic uh, conversion. Uh, yellow and black, but uh, there was speech. It plays well. Um, pretty fast. It, it was really good. A yeah, really good, uh, good conversion. The Spectrum did well with that one. So that's uh, Chase HQ. Next one is also one of the best games. Also a Bob Wakelin uh, cover art, which is uh, Midnight Resistance. Uh, fantastic cover art there. Really good game, this. Um, fantastic. You see the the two... I think the two at left, left shot and the middle shot is Spectrum. I'm not sure if the right shot is Spectrum. But those are um, definitely Spectrum shots. But this is a great game. I've, I've played this on the Amiga first of all. And then uh, basically... Uh, then we had it on the Spectrum. We loved it on the Spectrum. Completed it on the Spectrum. And then uh, then we found it on the Amiga. Loved it on the Amiga. And I saw this for the first time at um, the Winter Warmer event that they had on the arcade. Uh, and I was quite um, blown away. Because the actual arcade has a... Um, like a, a control stick for your the, your movements and then a, a twisty control stick for where you're firing, like a 360 firing motion, which is pretty cool. Never seen that before because I'd never seen the arcade. So, and last, but by no means least, of the small boxes is another Bob Wakelin picture, is uh, Rainbow Islands. Possibly one of the best games on the spectrum. Uh, definitely highly rated. Um, fantastic artwork. Lovely game, great music, great gameplay, really simple. Uh, I haven't played a bad version of the original games. I don't like the DS versions, and I don't like the um, the, th the DS and the PSP. I don't know why they messed about with it, but um, Rainbow Islands is fantastic. Love it. It's definitely up there, um, and a great box art as well. Right, that's that one. Right, the next one we've got is, I suppose this is a bit of a clamshell, so it's a bit of a big one. It's new old stock, which is Barbarian, the ultimate warrior. And there he is, look, if you remember him from his Days of the Gladiator, actually it's before his Days of the Gladiator, it's Wolfman from Gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Maria Whitaker, as uh, Tootie informed me. On uh, I made a comment on um, I believe Rich King Retro's video. I said it was Wolf Wolf, and I can't remember the lady's name. Uh, Tootie said it's Maria Whitaker. So uh, yeah, it's Wolfman and Maria Whitaker there. 
Um, there was a lot of contra um, very controversial this cover, but it caused a big stir, and um, I suppose it was uh, you know it did its job really because it uh, got a lot of attention. Um, also, this is new old stock, so inside. I do have the poster, comes with a poster and everything, brand new poster, I haven't really opened it or anything, but it should be staying in there, it's not going on the wall or anything, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, Barbarian, the Ultimate Warrior, this game was fantastic, it was, uh, it's a Spectrum graphics there, very controversial actually, there was a move that you could do, um, it's di a di diagonal up away from the way you're facing and fire, and you would do a spinning move with the sword and you could chop your opponent's head off if their energy was low enough. And then the little gremlin type fella would come along and he would kick the, the head of your opponent off the screen and drag the, the headless body off of the screen. Um, it was actually banned in Germany um, for that reason. So this never got, as far as I'm aware... It didn't uh wasn't released in Germany or it was banned very it may have been released but then was banned very uh, soon after. So uh, I'm not sure if they can get it now, I expect they can get it now easy easy enough, but quite controversial back in the day. So that is Barbarian, the Ultimate Warrior. There's a Wolfman and Maria Whitaker. Brilliant game, very good game. Great on the Spectrum, great on the Amiga. Um I haven't played it on anything else, but it's every version I've played has been very good. More new old stock, which is Double Dragon. Uh, I remember this back in the day being in a cardboard box, um, but this new old stock is uh, in a, a another larger clamshell. Um, totally brand new. Um, so you, you can't beat new old stock, really. It's fantastic. So, but uh, yeah, the original one I remember the original release was in um in a cardboard box. So, but this is uh. Double Dragon, this, I think that's more the, it's not a Spectrum shot, it's Mega, IPM, C64, Atari ST. Yeah, the Spectrum uh, graphics weren't great. They were okay, but um, it wasn't a bad conversion. It was playable. Um, but, you know, when you're up against Target Renegade, you know, uh, which uh, ironically is sort of the sequel. Well, Dub Double Dragon is the sequel to the Arcade Renegade, isn't it? They made Renegade first in the arcade, and then they made Double Dragon. So, um, Target Renegade was only released on home computers. So, but we'll talk about Target Renegade in a bit anyway. So, with Double Dragon, um, I loved Double Dragon as a kid. Um, Double Dragon and Bad Dudes. Uh, we used to, me and my friend Joe used to play that, and uh, we used to go on holiday. He used to take Joe on holiday with me, my mum, my dad. Joe was my friend, and uh, we just used to get out of the arcades and play Double Dragon and Bad Dudes. And we we completed it many a time. Saved old Ronald Reagan. I think you go for a burger with him at at the end of uh, Bad Dudes, don't you? I think. <laughs> it's crazy that you got to save the president, Ronald Reagan. Right, the next one is more new old stock, which is uh, Ghostbusters 2. Uh, they're back. <laughs> um, yeah, this was... Uh, it was an okay game, uh, a little frustrating, I would say, this one. I think those are like the Amiga screenshots there. Well, Atari ST was pretty much the same as Amiga usually, isn't it? But, um, yeah, great film, okay game. Like I said, that was the first level there, and that level was quite frustrating. If you could get past that level, um, you, you get a bit further and you get into the game and it wasn't so bad, but that level was so frustrating. So, but that's Ghostbusters 2. It's a... Uh, an okay game. Not a patch on the first one. The first one was brilliant. For first game. I mean, it, it, it moved on graphically and it's probably a lot more complex game, but the first one for me, big time nostalgia. Brilliant. Um, now, one of the best games possibly on the Spectrum. Uh, probably one of the biggest selling, definitely. It's Robocop. Um, absolutely fantastic. Really, uh, really love this game. Uh, love the film. Um... It's uh, just such a great game. The music, the music for this game, you, you'll hear that in a lot of your YouTubers' channels, the, uh, the intro music and stuff. And uh, uh, If you remember back in the day, 
Uh, it was also used in the Ariston music. Uh, on and on and Ariston. <laughs> Look it up. Uh, you know, and uh, so yeah, the music was really, really famous. If you hear it, you probably recognize it. L look it up Spectrum Robocop intro music, fantastic. Um, loved Robocop, loved the film. What a, a great, really sort of mad, bloodthirsty film. I remember hiring this off of uh, Andy the mobile video van, and um, once he'd rented it out enough, and there was a copy available to buy off him. This was the first ever film I actually bought was Robocop and pulled off Andy the mobile video van. And um, we got some good news, actually, um, if you're a Robocop fan. Um, the original director of this film, um, um, his name eludes me, sorry, but uh, he's a fantastic director. He directed the first Robocop. He's also directed uh, the first Starship Troopers, the only one that was any good. He's also done several uh, uh, other films. But apparently... Um, on it, uh, we're talking about Robocop. Apparently, he's coming back to do. They're doing a remake of not the original Robocop, and it's as if all the other Robocops haven't happened. Only this Robocop here, this game here, has happened. So the original Robocop has happened, and he's going to do what he would have done, Robocop 2. So, you know, because Robocop 2 and Robocop 3 was awful. <laughs> but yeah, the, he's do, he's doing a remade Robocop 2. Like, so hopefully he'll bring his magic that he brought to the first film and like Starship Troopers and all that. He's a pretty, he's a pretty good director. And quite, ma you know, not the sort of uh, best of storyline films, I suppose. But if you want blood and gore and action, he's pretty much your man. So yeah, that's Robocop. So we're talking about games. Sorry, not films. So I've started going on one end, but... Uh, I'm just excited about that news because I really enjoyed Robocop. I mean, and when we watched Robocop 2 and Robocop 3, it was so disappointing. It was directed by someone else. It's just just cash cows, weren't they? You know, and that, the new Robocop was okay, actually. I quite enjoyed the new Robocop. But uh, nevertheless, I enjoyed Robocop the game. <laughs> Not, I don't know if this is as much as a film, but I definitely put a lot of hours in, completed this many a time. Actually, this is a great game on the uh, Game Boy as well. Very same music as the Spectrum, same level layer as the Spectrum. Game Boy is a powerful little thing. I, you know, it's, I'd say it's on a, on a par with this, on a, on a par with the uh, Spectrum version. To be honest, it's quite very close. So uh, yeah, that's Robocop on Spectrum. Fantastic game. Uh, okay, next one. Yeah, all right, we will go that one. <laughs> right, possibly the best shoot 'em up of all time. Uh, there's some uh, controversy for you. Um, R Type, everyone knows R Type. R Type is fantastic. Um, absolutely brilliant conversion on the Spectrum. And the only problem with it is they didn't do a 128K version. If they'd done a 128K version with music, oh, what they could have done. Fantastic, though. Um, plays just like the arcade. Good graphics, great gameplay, fast, fluid. Uh, the Amiga version was um, also fantastic, brilliant, uh, very close to the arcade and R Type 2. Uh, the Amstrad CPC version wasn't so great, um, but uh, there's, a, there's a guy that's done a remake of the uh, Amstrad CPC, uh, and apparently he's done it justice because it was more of a lazy port than the Amstrad CPC wasn't up to the task. Uh, to be honest, I had a bit of a you know, with uh, Nova Bug, and I was like, oh, you know, Specky, and he was like, yeah, well, you named some bad Amstrad games, and, and I, I sort of said, oh, so he's like, yeah, I'll give you that, look, you know, but that wasn't the machine's fault, and uh, he actually put me right on a few things, and uh, showed me some games that are absolutely fantastic on the Amstrad, uh, better than the Spectrum, but you didn't hear that from me, some some games, um, but yeah, it, it, to be honest, before the 16-bit wars, there was always the playground 8-bit wars, you know, most of us were Specky, uh, you had a couple of C64, one or two C64s, and a few Amstrad CPC 464 kiddies. So, you know, we're all battling that out, but, you know, there's great games on all systems. And like I said, um, Novabug showed me some great games on the Amstrad, and uh, I think he showed, I think, I can't remember if it was when I met him in person or if he showed me on his show. They had a Shadow of the Beast demo, demo running, and that was fantastic. Uh, looked awesome, looked really good. But uh, we're talking about our type, so I'm going off on one again. But yeah, so uh, Arto is great. I've got this twice, and that is that is actual Spectrum graphics there. But oh no, they're not. But the Spectrum looks just like that, to be honest. So um, yeah, it looks great on the Spectrum. Um, looks brilliant on the Amiga. 
So it's pretty good on all versions. Like I say, it was just a lazy port on the Amstrad. It wasn't down to the Amstrad, the machine. It was just down to the guy who bloomin' made it. So some some of the games uh, that were that were released, there wasn't much quality control. People go on about ET and stuff, uh, but some games are just awful. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot more trash than there is treasure. But uh, if you know what you're looking for, there's some great games. But that's our type. We've got two of these. The other one's on display, so I won't bring it down. I was going to um, make a like a 3D case showing the, the the front of the box and then the back of the box. So I had two versions, but I never sort of got around to them. And I love our type. I, I, I like to get it on the on the Amiga. There's something in the pipeline possibly happening at the moment. I'm that might be on the cards, but. Uh, you know, there's a few good things happening at the moment, actually. So, but that there for uh, up and coming videos. But that's that's our type. That's uh, absolutely fantastic game. Fantastic artwork as well. Fantastic cover. Brilliant game. Really glad I've got that. Um, and he's back, <laughs> but he's forgot Maria Whitaker. In fact, she's been stolen. I think she's been stolen by the evil Drax, and she's in Drax's dungeon. So this is Barbarian Two, which also includes the original Barbarian. Unfortunately, this isn't in that great condition. It's a little bit dented, um, but I needed it in a collection, so I picked this one up. Um, this game was not as good as the original Barbarian, but they tried something different. Um, it's almost like a side scroll. You can go left, you can go right, and you've, you've got different screens and pits you can fall down and you fight and, in arenas and things. So it's pretty cool, but it just wasn't as good at first because the first was just like a one-on-one -on -one fighter. Um, and this was like a, a sort of a, more of a an adventure sort of fighter sort of thing. So, but it was still pretty cool, as you can see. The graphics, like I say, everyone goes on about the graphics of the spectrum. I always thought when they're black and white, you got a lot more sort of detail because you didn't get the color bleed. You see, see the the color bleed. But then again, I suppose if you have a better quality monitor or whatever. Um, that's a bit naughty, isn't it? It's on the spectrum at the very bottom. <laughs> what are they trying to say? But uh, yeah, so Barbarian was great. Uh, uh, it was, well, it wasn't great. It was a good. It was a good game. So I enjoyed it anyway. So never completed it though. <laughs> but that's Barbarian. Um, the next game I've got, I think, has come straight from Ninja School, because uh, it is Shinobi. And if you can see, someone's been throwing knives at it or ninja stars by the look of it. Um, really upsets me things like that. Why people are just idiots and don't look after things, I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, Shinobi, fantastic game in the arcade. Fantastic game on the Master System. Pretty damn good game on the Spectrum, actually. I quite enjoy it. Very good on the Amiga. Uh, I haven't played it on any, any other systems. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic game. Um really cool game side scroller you've got to rescue the kids and uh kill all the sort of ninjas or enemy guys and there's sort of two levels you can go up or down the screen really cool really good o old arcade game fantastic really cool i'd love to get this on the amiga um on big boxes release here but it's uh it's, i've only seen it come out once or twice and it's been silly money the american version is um looks pretty cool as well but i don't know if american games would work on um british I, I asked one of my my friends and he said there may be timing issues but he wasn't sure because obviously they run on ntsc we run on pal but then we were using that modulator thing weren't we for the 500 so or a monitor so i wouldn't have thought that would really matter too much but uh the, the on the releases it does say the ntsc release or you know pal release so Perhaps there is a difference because sometimes you can source good games in America, but I don't want to buy them if they're not going to work, like you know. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, Shinobi, absolutely fantastic arcade classic, and a good uh, computer conversion. And the next one it is another Bob Waitland artwork is Batman: The Cape Crusader. This one's a bit damaged. I bought this one, but then I managed to find this one. And this one is uh, pretty minty fresh. It's absolutely, it's a slight dent there, but other than that, it's like it's almost factory fresh, nearly. It's lovely. Um, so this is Batman: The Cape Crusader. Um, this was like um, almost like before point and clicks. You sort of control the Batman, and you sort of um, you have to find different things and work out puzzles and things. So it's sort of like a prequel to the sort of point and click, I would say. 
Um, there were three Batmans on the spectrum. There was an isometric one. There was this one. And obviously there was Batman the movie. There might be more if I'm if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, but that's the three that I can remember. Don't really remember playing this one too much. But um, like I say, when I was collecting... I mean, look at that artwork. That's fantastic, isn't it? And if you can get it in this collection, you, you, in this condition, you think of how old this game is, and it's man, it, someone's kept it in that good condition. I will be getting, um, or I'll be trying to get uh, protective cases for a lot of these games because uh, they're uh, they need protect, they need looking after. Like I say, it's all about pre preservation if you can, um, and keeping your games in good condition, looking after them. Um, and possibly for the next generation or you know i know 200 years this and all this media is going to be rotted away but well we've got it let's appreciate it and like i say I've, i think it's fantastic love the artwork love the games it brings out so much memories and it'd be nice for the generations below us to uh, to appreciate these games as well really um uh, right and the last one i got is just a bit of one. I remember having this in the day. The condition of this one's awful. <laughs> but back in the day, if you couldn't afford to get many games, or you could, you know, you you might be lucky enough to get a compilation. Uh, the guy I remember having having this had no problems with uh, money for games. He pretty much got everything he ever wanted. His, his, his our old friend Dougal McTavish. Yeah, Dougal McTavish had this, uh, and I remember forever trying to borrow. Target Renegade off him or Grise or Combat School. Karnov was cool. I got this eventually myself, um, or I basically got those games eventually. Um, so, yeah, it is uh, just a very good compilation. Pretty much every game on here is good. I don't rate Predator, if I remember rightly. I'm not sure about Platoon, and I'm not sure how good Crazy Cars is, but Crazy Cars on other systems is pretty cool. So, But all the other games are absolute classics. Karnov's great, Grisel's great, Combat School's great, Barbarian is great, and Target Renegade, well, <laughs> Target Renegade is absolutely great. <laughs> so, right, that's uh, I think that's the uh, end of part two. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I've enjoyed making it. I've had, this is actually the second time I've making it. I've had a bit of a nightmare with it. Um, but I feel pa passionate about the Spectrum. Um, I must do because I've got the tripod out. <laughs> you know, usually a shaky hand cam. But I'm trying to do a, a bit of a better job, a professional looking job. And I want to do the system justice. So, um, yeah, I I've really enjoyed making this. It's certainly um, released a lot of uh, nostalgia for me, re-seeing these games. Uh, and I hope you keep watching because there's, there's going to be another part or another two parts I'll try and I'm thinking I'm going to try and squeeze it into one part. It's probably going to be two parts. So, and there's some great games coming up. The next one is the double double uh, case. Um, well, these cases I'll show you one game, but it's these cases, which is the uh, a lot of Spectrum games were released in these cases. So, this was pretty cool actually. Outrun, you got the um, a tape with the arcade music on it as well in here. So. Uh, not necessarily a great game, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Music was cool on the Spectrum, and I enjoyed it. But a lot of it gets a lot of uh, gets slated a lot. But uh, yeah, well, that's for the next one anyway. Okay, YouTube, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.